cultural diplomacy is a very big and fuzzy and I think vague term that most people don't use without understanding or understand without using. Uh, uh, in the very narrow sense, cultural diplomacy is a tool of governmental policy, like any kind of diplomacy, intended specifically to advance the interest of the state through culture. That is the traditional definition of cultural uh, diplomacy, uh, using culture as a tool of uh, statecraft to advance trade relations, to pacify relations between countries, to build bridges. You know, there are many, many definitions you can have. I could already see you shaking your head, so I can't wait for you to fill in the blanks. Uh, there's, but really what I think we're here to talk about is a much broader uh, set of issues, uh, which is the much, much larger issue of cultural exchange, cultural interchange, cultural relations between countries, which sometimes connect with politics, sometimes don't connect with politics. Um, but whatever the case, uh, the bottom line is that part of the audience for this culture that is being developed and nurtured here is external to the UAE, it's external to Abu Dhabi. And intentionally or not, messages are being broadcast, if you will, through these investments to the world about your intentions, about who you are, about what, what, you, what values you're seeking to project. Uh, and these messages, these initiatives can have, in fact, an important role to play uh, in this region, which is a troubled region. And in this region where the UAE has been uh, uh, if you will, an oasis of tranquility and peacefulness and, uh, 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 and willingness to engage uh, the rest of the world. So it seems to me that uh, this is a very good place uh, uh, to talk about these issues. I want to say, though, uh, I, when it comes to cultural diplomacy, I have a personal experience in this. I grew up uh, in Eastern Europe behind the so-called Iron Curtain. Uh, where we were the targets, if you will, of American cultural diplomacy. Uh, and it was a very successful uh, project. Uh, we, uh, long before the Berlin Wall came down, we had been won over. We uh, connected to the values of the West. And how did we connect to the values of the West? Well, through Woody Allen and jazz and William Faulkner and abstract expressionism and so on and so forth. Uh, in other words, there's a very successful history of this kind of engagement. Um, uh, I'm not sure how it translates to relations between the Western world and this part of the world. That's an interesting question for us to talk about. But this sort of battle for the hearts and minds is very much at the heart of this part of the conversation. Now, it should be mentioned that recent years haven't been particularly kind to cultural diplomacy, certainly not in the United States. Uh, these have been years not of soft power, but of hard power. And no amount of uh, cultural diplomacy can uh, 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 change things if you're at war with parts of the world. Uh, uh, but in fact, things have, uh, the, the, these recent years haven't been kind to cultural diplomacy even going back before the Bush administration, because in fact, after the Cold War, much of the apparatus of public diplomacy, cultural diplomacy was dismantled in the United States. We won. We, feel, we thought we wouldn't need this again. Now there's another turning point. I think there's a sense of a new beginning in these relationships, a new appreciation for persuasion instead of confrontation. Um, and so uh, my hope is that today uh, we can explore uh, some of these uh, themes. Before we do that, I want to mention uh, that I think that there are some analogies between the situation of the UAE and the United States. America projects a very powerful, very influential culture without having a great appreciation for it as a political uh, diplomatic tool, as Cynthia will tell us in more detail. Uh, here, too, in the Emirates, uh, there are important cultural projects, but they're not necessarily designed from the beginning as uh, with the initial intention of what messages they will broadcast to the world. So there's a great, great opportunity to, to explore these themes. I, I'm deliberately trying to get your head shaking because I want to prime you for a debate on this subject. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to Cynthia. Tell us how the world looks from your corner. Well, I just, you know, this 
you know, what Americans do is we disagree with each other and we like to do it publicly. Um, I mean, that's kind of the whole point. You know, we, if we believe in freedom of expression, we also exercise it. So uh, I'm going to just begin with just a couple of disagreements and then go on to some more general points. I think um, part of the many problems that have uh, been involved in the way the United States has related to the world over the last uh, eight years has been using culture when we have, which is practically never, as a tool. And I think what is different, what strikes me as so different with the, for the approach of the UAE is that it's not being seen as a tool. That's why you're missing what you say you're missing. Um, because culture is seen, as I understand it, as really the heart and soul of the country, the people, and it is integral to how they express themselves and relate to the world. Well, that is actually true of every country. And the great irony is that it's probably you know, more true about the United States than any place because we do have, I'm not saying it's necessarily the best, but we do have the most powerful and impactful culture in the world. And yet, we draw a very sharp line between politics, which is serious stuff involving negotiations over treaties which never go anywhere, <laughs> versus, you know, culture which is something nice and you do when you have spare time. And I think we've done ourselves a lot of damage by not recognizing how integral culture is to the very core of the countries which we are trying to relate to, trying to understand, uh, particularly the countries in this region. They understand that about us. Ironically, we don't understand it about ourselves. Uh, an example from a Dutch historian, uh, Housinga. I was formerly the ambassador to the Netherlands. And Housinga said, if you, he wrote a book about America after he'd lived there. And he said, if you want to understand America, you have to begin by reading Walt Whitman. Uh, and then go on to looking at American cinema, because cinema is the most demographic medium of expression that exists. Now, it's so funny, you know, it takes uh, someone from the outside to say that. I, I don't think you'd see any of our political leaders standing up there saying, if you want to understand my country, please read Walt Whitman. But other people would understand immediately what that was about. So. How, and, and, and this was not always the case. Uh, Andras referred to the sort of golden age of cultural diplomacy in the 1950s, you know, when we sent um, jazz musicians, for example, rock and roll musicians, writers uh, all around the world. And that relates to the kind of danger aspect of culture that we were talking about. There's a famous episode with uh, Dizzy Gillespie when he was invited to the State Department for a briefing before he went on one of these tours. These tours lasted for a month. They went all over. They went to Iran, Iraq, Africa, Afghanistan, and went all over. And um, so Mr. Gillespie was brought into the State Department for a briefing. And he said, you know, I don't need any briefing from you all. I know what I think about this country, and nothing you say to me is going to change. Remember, this was a time when the United States government is sending these African-American musicians around the world to perform before the highest levels of, of the elite in different parts of the world. And these same people could not even walk through the front door of the theater in many parts of America. Now, Dizzy Gillespie said to his briefers, you know, forget it, I know what I want to say and you're not going to tell me anything. And the great thing is he went anyway. You know, nobody says, no, 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 here are your talking points. He went. Uh, and they went with the music embodying democracy through its freedom and risk taking. And they also said where they went, we don't only want to play for the elite. We want to let the people waiting outside who don't have tickets in. And we're going to perform for them, too. So there was this personification of what democracy meant, rather than preaching at people uh, about what it is. 